Good morning, everyone. Good morning also to our dear parents who are watching live via Facebook. My name is Eden. And I'm Claudine, and welcome to the special webcast of the Parents Orientation Program of the Basic Education Department. We are live here in the main building of FSUU. That's right, Clau. Thanks to technology and the internet. This pandemic may have challenged us in so many ways, and that of course includes the way we facilitate learning for our learners. But on the sunny side, it also has taught us different ways of doing things like this one. I agree to that, Mom Eden. And I really think that it's a high time for all of us, not just the students, teachers, but also the parents and guardians to really learn and relearn and how we can support our students as they continue their learning because we believe that learning must never stop, hence the conduct of this webcast. Okay, you're right then, but um, probably there are also things that we might need to unlearn temporarily mm -hmm. to be able to cope up with the changes of the, this pandemic. Mm -hmm. To start, let us invoke the presence of the Lord to be led by the newly appointed Aura Coordinator and Campus Minister of the Basic Education, Father Junri Aguilion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the loving and caring parents and guardians of our pupils and students. Thank you for creative teachers, supportive FSU priests. We thank you for the opportunity to begin this new school year in this time of pandemic. Lord, we ask you to, ble to bless our pupils and our students together with their parents and guardians, faculty and teachers, so that the love of Christ continue to be burning in their hearts. May your Holy Spirit be with us to make this orientation a successful one bestowed on us the gifts of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, so that we may be always be agile. We pray also that you will guide us in all ways, so that we will seek your will in everything that we do. We hope, Lord, that all our actions always glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To welcome us all in this program, let us listen to the message of our University President, Reverend Father John Christian Yu Young, and this will be followed by the messages of our University Vice President of Academic Affairs and Research, Reverend Father Jan Randy Jasper Ochige, and our Basic Education Principal, Ms. Maria Lourdes Bernadette V. Sanchez. Okay. Hi, I am Father John. Welcome to this orientation for the Morelos campus. As we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a huge disruption in all aspects of life, including, as you know by now, education. We at FSUU have tried to really respond to the challenge of this pandemic by adapting to the new environment. It also means that you as parents, as students, as faculty members and staff 
we'll also have to transition. We'll also need to adapt. This orientation will help all of us adapt to the new processes, the new methodologies, and other aspects of life in the basic education unit of FSUU. I'm sure that you will find the orientation useful, informative, and ultimately fruitful. So enjoy this orientation and Lucia at Lux Vestra. Good day to all parents and guardians of our pupils and students at the Basic Education Department of FSUU. It is my distinct honor to welcome you to the orientation of our fully online educational environment. The COVID pandemic has disrupted our lives and has drastically altered the many cultural and societal processes of our society. This includes education. So faithful to the mission of our founder, FSUU has spared no effort in finding solutions that best serve the modality of asynchronous and blended learning. Our agility of adapting to the new normal demonstrates the importance of resilience dividend in our institutional planning. This orientation, among other things, is an expression of our commitment towards an inclusive and holistic implementation of this online school year. As an African saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. As we forge ahead in this new school year, we say it takes a community to educate a child. And for us in FSUU, this means that the success of providing meaningful, relevant, and quality education during this challenging situation of COVID-19 hinges on the collective efforts and aggregated response of all the stakeholders, teachers, the administrators, students and pupils and the parents, especially the parents and the guardians as our main stakeholder, especially in this fully online academic year. And so I hope this activity will be of benefit to all of us. So once again, welcome and God bless. Father Saturnino Urius University warmly welcomes the pupils and students in the most challenging time yet interesting time to learn their lessons through the internet while they are geographically remote from school, their classmates, and teachers during instructions. For the first time, the basic education department will deliver home-based schooling. To be able to facilitate learning and engage learners' active participation, the school's management team put up a learning management system, protocols, and guidelines to continue serving the community. In response, the faculty participated in webinars and enrolled in online courses to develop and enhance with the latest trends and technology and their teaching methods and also to keep growing as persons. In the same way, the staff joined in the same webinars to be on board with the faculty so they can better support and assist the teachers. All the processes and decisions toward the sudden shift from face to face and learning to an online or blended modality of instruction. Consider the data on connectivity, enrollment figures, assumptions, figures, adjustments, and strategic plan, including the vision, mission, and goals of the university. And of course, considering 
the health and safety of everyone. As we journey to a new mode of learning, of teaching and learning, I welcome the pupils of kindergarten, grade schools, and the students of junior high school and senior high school to the basic education department orientation. Lucia Lux Vestra, Nook et Semper. Embracing the new normal of learning is indeed a challenging and exciting journey to embark on. But along with the excitement of this new normal of education is the anxiety of parents. That's right, Ma'am Eden. Thus the question, do we stand in as parents? Do we stand in as teachers? Well, let's find that out today. Yes, Ma'am Eden. As we embark in this new online learning journey, it is very important that we get used to the features of this platform that we are using. Exactly. And so, into, uh, to introduce these to us, we have Reverend Father James Kabungkal, the assistant to the principal, to discuss to us the role of FSUU in this educational adjustment, and of course, the introduction of FSUU Learn as the new platform for learning of our students. And the chairperson of the science division, Mrs. Maricris I. Abuan, will discuss the responsibilities of the teachers and academic administrators and the environment at home and responsibilities of students. By the way, we would like to ask uh, those, uh, our viewers today, to take down notes or maybe you can replay the uh, streaming later. Or just feel free to type in your questions or concerns in the comments section. And together with the division chairpersons and the members of the ad hoc committee, we will do our best to accommodate you with your concerns. That's right. Father James? Good day to all our FSUU parents and guardians watching this online orientation via FB Live. In the onset of the challenge of this pandemic that we are experiencing, FSUU administration have been so proactive, beginning with the gathering of data, interpreting them, planning and plotting out strategies, FSUU will be implementing an online asynchronous and blended pedagogy in the basic education department. Why? Because first, Father Saturnino Orius University Basic Education Department pursues its mission to provide quality education. And second, like all the parents, we want to keep your children safe from the risks brought by, the, by this pandemic. Having said the context and the pedagogy, the question now is how are we going to implement it concretely? To address this question, we have crafted an FSUU Basic Education Department Online Learning Guidelines. To begin with is the design of an online classroom instruction. And to be specific, the Basic Education Department uses FSUU Learn as the university's official learning environment in preparing, administering online classes. The self-paced nature of online classes allows students flexible schedule in studying this in instructional materials in complying the subject assessment and the requirements. To know more about this FSU you learn, watch this video clip.
In short, after and with all the considerations, FSUU Learn, powered by NEO, is the most fitting LMS in today's context. The next one is the online curriculum. The conduct of online class instruction is guided by diversity framework in planning and implementing a curriculum which is standard-based and competence-based. The crafted curriculum map contains the most essential learning competencies, online assessment, and activities which are aligned to the standards. The online instructional learning plan using 5e learning model for each subject is prepared to ensure quality online classroom instructions. The instructional template is filled out weekly by the subject teacher. The instructional learning plan is a complete plan in teaching a subject to a class through the online method. In 5e instructional model, teachers seek strategies that help students gain a complete understanding of new concepts. It aims to engage students, motivate them to learn, and guide them toward skill development and orient values formation. One instructional learning plan using 5A model, which is engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate, is prepared weekly by each teacher based on the subject that is assigned to him or her. This 5A model will be explained in detail in the lesson presentations as part of the responsibilities of the teachers. How about on the part of the readiness of our teachers, our faculty? We always had a concrete institutional support. Faculty members are given training in the transition from classroom teaching to online teaching using FSUU Learn. There are also members of ADO committee who are chosen to train and assist the teachers who have difficulty in manip manipulating the online learning platform. Online teaching training continues throughout the progression of the online classes. Support for ongoing training, development, and instructional materials and content migration is provided. Individual faculty is supervised by the subject person principal and administrators. The FSU Learn admin is responsible for coordinating all e-class activities with the subject persons, subject chairpersons, school principal and university registrar. This involves managing the online learning environment, providing teacher and learner support, and providing relevant e-class evaluation data to administrators. Now, not only our classes are online, in fact, our enrollment is done online. Just follow the very simple steps and submit the necessary payments and requirements and you will be enrolled. We have four steps for new students and transferees and two steps only for continuing students. Just visit and like our FSU basic, basic Education FB page to get updates or visit our website at www or use.edo.ph and always check your emails for further instructions. It takes two to three, uh, three to four days to process a continuing student and it will be longer for a transfer student about six to seven days. For assistance, questions, and further queries, you can always reach out our tech support. Again, just visit our FSU Basic Education FB page to get information or visit our website at www.urius.edo.ph And always remember, we are all in this together. We are all learning and adapting to the new normal. Have a blessed day. Good morning everyone, especially to the parents who are watching at this moment. I am Mrs. Mary Chris I Abuan, Science Chairperson of Father Saturnino Urias University, Basic Education Department, Morelos Campus. Today, I will discuss with you the responsibilities of the teachers and academic administrators, as well as the environment at home, 
and responsibilities of students. Let me start with responsibilities of the teachers and academic administrators. We know that online learning is new to all. One of the great challenges it poses is on the aspect on the quality of delivery of the lesson and the efficiency of the platform. Father Saturnino Orius University administration surely can provide both. Teachers have been prepared and trained and FSUU Learn Platform features promotes active and engaged participation of the students. Planning and preparing online lessons. The online lessons are prepared and administered by each teacher and checked by respective subject area chairperson. Each online lesson, which is good for one week, is composed of the following parts. First, engage, wherein students' prior knowledge is assessed and misconceptions are identified. Hook activities that rouse interest to the new topic are also provided. Second, explore in which activities for students to use process skills are provided. Third, explain, wherein teachers allow students demonstrate their understanding and clarify misconceptions. Fourth, elaborate, in which teachers provide opportunity for practice and students apply new knowledge. Fifth, evaluate, wherein teachers assess the students using the most appropriate tool to measure students' learning. Learning resources chosen are checked by the subject chairperson and ad hoc committee to avoid plagiarism. They are also reviewed to ensure their alignment with the standards. Enough time is given in the preparation of online lesson. Individual faculty undergoes a training prior to online lesson preparation. Delivering online classroom instruction. Learning is an individual activity. The teacher provides the learning experience and helps the pupils to draw more understanding from the experience and hone their skills. An online lesson, part of delivering online classroom instruction, is online teaching of a subject. In online teaching of a subject, all faculty members are required to create an e-class for all their teaching loads containing the curriculum map, learning outcomes, and other pertinent course intent and information. Faculty members may do blended delivery mode as directed by the university administration to integrate on-campus learning activities with online instruction for an assigned subject provided that subject delivery requirements are met. The online sessions may be asynchronous or synchronous. All online learning activities in a blended delivery must be reflected in the E-Class subject calendar, approved by the subject chairperson and the principal. Faculty members must take into account the number of hours allotted for each learning session in creating content so as not to overwhelm the learner and thereby sacrificing the outcome and competency. The assessments and performance tasks are carefully crafted in order to allow student enough time to produce quality output. Subject chairperson and the school principal shall regularly monitor all faculty conducting online classes to ensure compliance. During the school year, the teacher must do the following. One, 
prepare and enhance online lessons. Two, prepare the assigned student assessments. The pre-assessment, formative and summative assessments will be given online using appropriate and manageable digital tools. These will be conducted in a manner that the integrity of the assessments will be protected. Third, prepare the table of specifications and test questions approved by the subject, chairperson, and principal. The quarterly assessment should be conducted in a manner that its integrity is also protected. Fourth, discuss the conduct of the subject, including subject policies, online learning activities, and schedule. Fifth, ensure that students access all assigned learning materials by regularly checking the activities of the students enrolled in each class. Six, assess students' understanding of concepts. Make sure that assignments are turned in regularly and logged into the classroom. Seventh, provide feedback on the students' progress. And eight, allow time for online follow-up and consultation with students and parents. Modes of delivering online classes. The mode of delivering online instruction that the school will implement is blended learning in which some face-to-face -face contact hours are replaced with online instruction through the FSU you learn. The online learning of the student is teacher facilitated that combines both synchronous and asynchronous learning. Asynchronous session is an e-class activity that does not require all students to be online at the same time, while synchronous session is an e-class activity in which the faculty and all students are simultaneously logged on to FSU you learn using the chat feature. The following are different types of online learning components that are utilized in an online instruction, such as e-learning, e-class, e-class session, and online learning activity. E-learning means learning activities are conducted via electronic media, predominantly through the internet. E-class is the online class designed as an alternative to the classroom-based or face-to-face -face meeting in the campus. The E-class should be created by a faculty with a teaching load during the sem semester or school year using FSU you learn. E-class session is a scheduled activity conducted within the electronic class using FSU you learn. An online learning activity is a learning activity where students are required to access lessons and assessment activities within the e-class. Students learning in a subject and attendance. The pupil or student is oriented on the following. One, five E's online learning plan, unexpected weekly tasks or outputs. Two, Navigation and important features of FSU you learn. Three, online rules for attendance, behavior, punctuality, and accomplishment of outputs and weekly tasks. Fourth, online conference. Five, grading system. The grading system shall follow the institutional grading system as mandated by the Department of Education per subject area from kinder to senior high school. Attendance in online classes is mandatory, just as face-to-face -face classes. Students are expected to regularly attend all classes for which they are registered. Absence from class, regardless of the reason, 
does not relieve the student of his or her responsibility to complete all subject requirements within the required deadlines. Attendance will be tracked through the online student management system by the teacher. Attendance will incorporate completion of subject requirements, participation in completing subject assignments, and interactions with the teacher. The teacher must report excessive and or unexplained absences to the guidance center for investigation and potential intervention. Topics are delivered in such a way that students' mastery of the lesson is ensured before moving forward in the lessons, and regular individual feedback is shared with the students. Academic administrator supervision and monitoring of online classes. The supervision and monitoring of administrators online classes are important in an educational institution. Supervision and monitoring will make the administrator reinforce teaching practices to improve learners' learning using FSUU Learn online platform in teaching the different subjects, especially during challenging situations. The academic administrators or chairpersons guarantee that the faculty member assigned to teach online classes of the subjects prepares and submits necessary requirements in online classes. These are the characteristics of monitoring and supervising the faculty at the level of academic administrator or chairperson. One, the basic education department, Morelos Campus, uses FSUU Learn learning platform in making the instructional materials such as curriculum map, instructional template, assessment plans, and other e-learning resources. All the instructional materials are checked by the subject area chairpersons. The content development by the teacher is checked and monitored weekly. Subject area chairpersons are given online monitoring and supervision training. The subject area chairperson will conduct the following online activities to continue professional advancement such as Professional Learning Community or PLC, Monthly Division Meeting and Professional Enrichment Training, Monthly Giving of Feedback of filled out professional content and instructional templates. Regular supervision of teachers and close monitoring of the newly hired teachers. There will be monthly monitoring and checking of documents such as instructional plan using the instructional template and the table of specifications and test questions. The second topic which I will discuss is environment at home and responsibilities of students. The appropriate environment, attitude, and behavior of students and pupils are vital to facilitate learning in an online platform. Thus, the following guidelines are encouraged to be observed. First, Online materials needed are a laptop, personal computer, Android phone, iPhone, tablet mobile phone, B, headset, earphone, speaker, web camera, C, suitable internet connection, D, ebooks and other learning materials, E, installed FSUU Learn and Zoom. F, comfortable study table and chair, and G, with an easy reach learning materials. Second, online learning place. To attain the best work of the students, the following features of their learning place should be considered. Well-ventilated and lighted, comfortable room, 
privacy and free from any forms of distractions. Third, online classroom policy during synchronous modality of learning. A. Wear clothes that have collar and sleeves. B. Be online 30 minutes before the scheduled online class in each subject. C. Strictly follow the guidelines given by the teacher. D. Start and end the class with a prayer. And E. Videos should be on throughout the duration of the virtual conference class. Fourth, online proper dress code. School uniform is not required, but encouraged to be worn during online synchronous classes. PE uniform during Wednesdays or any clothes with collar for both boys and girls. And observe proper grooming when attending online classes. Online class break. During a 20-minute online break, the learners are encouraged to do physical or body stretching, walking for two minutes, take some snacks, drink water, and go to the comfort room if necessary as a way of being ready for the next online subject. Proposed class schedule. Overview. In preparing the class schedule, the following were considered. 1. Number of units for each subject. 2. Total number of hours of learning time required for each subject weekly. Number 3. Nature of the subject combination for a day's learning sessions. Number 4. Age and nature of pupils or students. Number 5. Pupils or students' screen time exposure. Number six, enough time for learning and guided instructions. Number seven, adult supervision at home for young learners from kinder to grade six. And number nine, possible number of learners and number of gadgets available for use for each household. Online learning sessions are scheduled from Monday to Friday. The subjects are not taught every day, but are arranged in combos, with consideration to the nature of the subjects for each combination. Every unit for each subject is allocated 50 minutes of learning time per session. Nature of class schedules. Learning sessions are mostly in asynchronous modes, meaning learning materials and activities or assignments are accessed by the learners through the university's official learning management system or FSU you learn within the duration of time set by the subject teachers. However, upon teacher's discretion, synchronous sessions or online face-to-face -face may be scheduled during the learning process. Should the learning process demands for it, as in the conduct of performance tasks, via any available virtual classroom or video conferencing platforms. Important considerations. The class schedule, such as time, day, and subjects, remains proposals to better facilitate learning. Innovation of the schedules to fit the context of the family can always be considered as long as it is in line with the e-policy of Father Saturnino Urius University. The class schedule is the basis of the weekly number of learning time required for all learners in their respective grade levels with respect to the number of units per subject. That ends my two topics. If we have questions or clarifications, you may ask those questions during the Q&A portion. Thank you everyone and let your light shine.
Thank you, Father James and Mrs. Abuan, for that discussion. Somehow, there is a re reassurance for all of us, no, na especially those who are somehow um, worried kung unsa na to ang ato ang um, online classes. And there, somehow, exactly. there was a clarification mm -hmm. needed. And by the way, let us uh, read some comments. Uh, no? And by the way, we say, we'd like to say hi to all our viewers, students, parents, guardians. Uh, by the way, if you want to have or you want to ask questions, uh, please fe uh, feel free to comment down your uh, concerns. And yes, yes. we also have with us our ad hoc committee who are answering the questions for you. Pag hindi na mo ma-answer na inyo ang questions, na sila para mo answer sa inyo. Yes, that's right, that's right. And Ma'am Eden, by the way, I, we um na ako nabasa dili ang uh, questions no from, this is from a student from Brent um he asked how are we going to log in the FSUU learn on sa okay. daw para makalog in ta mm -hmm. you have an answer for that ma'am um later on we will be presenting um sample lessons and um in that lesson presentation also you will be we will be showing you how to navigate the neo platform mm -hmm. so you will be able to see somehow uh, see for yourself how to log in and how to go about with the tabs there. And um, perhaps the questions here, like how to submit um, assignments mm -hmm. or requirements through our platform that would be addressed there. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to the schedule as um, presented by Mrs. Sabuan earlier, we also have uh, really set the schedule for classes each day. So we will be... Uh, students will be posted on that, of course. Mm -hmm, yes. And another question is, what will happen if the internet connection is slow and the student could not uh, log on or yeah, log in so you're not on time? Uh, and also, there is another concern earlier. If we are going to use modules, um, mm -hmm. it was clarified earlier by Mama Buan that we, we here in FSUU are actually using online learning, uh, blended learning, kay duha man ka form. We have online and we also have offline. But for FSUU, we are using the online learning. And that's mm -hmm. uh, a synchronous mode. And sometimes we also have synchronous mode or face-to-face -face na online na classes. But that will have a schedule, dili kay every day. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, all these things actually are contained also in our Parents and Guardians Orientation Kit for engagement in FSU, you learn. Mm -hmm. Everything is in there, actually. The schedule, uh, how to go about with uh, the, the platform, you can uh, see there. The schedule as well is there. Um, if you cannot access, that was the question, within uh, the scheduled time for your classes, our, our lessons actually are open for access for mm -hmm. a week for our students. So um, since this is more of a self-paced type of learning, so we intend to open our lessons for a whole week. Okay, so um, by whole week, we, we mean from Monday, Monday morning up to um, Sunday actually of midnight, your lessons are still accessible. And so you can still access your lessons, submit requirements. Yes, and uh, by the way, we then maybe we can uh, say hi to our viewers right now. We have here... Um, yes, we have 526 viewers. Oh, right 526 now, viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say hi first for uh, to Hossein Pascual, who is watching. Student ni siya, di ba, ma'am? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, name uh, sounds uh, sound familiar. Yeah. And we also have Bianca Banyasha. We also have Carol yes. Grace. Hi, Carol Grace. Hello. And we also have, of course, our teachers in the basic education who are also watching with us right now. Our supportive mm -hmm. co-teachers. Yes. Thank to you those, for watching. Yes. Uh, to those who are asking questions, now, if we cannot address your questions um, online here right now, um, of course, our teachers are there to answer for us. Just uh, keep posted on the mm -hmm. comment section. Okay. And, of course, this time we can really say that... Um, we have a reliable learning system, Ma'am Eden, de ba, that I should say. Uh, our administrators have really thought of. So we can say that we are really ready on the opening of classes this coming uh, October 24, mm -hmm. no? Puhon. Puhon, Puhon. Yes. Okay. So this time, Ma'am Eden, uh, let us have a glimpse of what it looks like pag uh, na karon sa inyong online lessons. This is especially for our uh, students. Mm -hmm. So you can look at uh, how it works no, on the online 
platform in FSU you learn. So mm-hmm. we have with us are Mrs. Nerilyn Mercado for grade school, yes. Miss Lorena Bass for junior high school, and Miss Andy Angelica Beltran for, for the, senior the senior high school. Okay. Good morning, parents. I am Mrs. Neri Lenfe R. Mercado, a grade school teacher. You may call me Teacher Neri. I am one of the members of ADHO Committee, and I am one of the FSUU Learn trainers. Today, I am going to present to you one of my classes in FSUU Learn. So the first thing that we are going to do is to log in, of course, in our account. So I'll be logging in as a student using a dummy account. So once you log in, you are going to click Log In with Google. And it will direct you to the student's dashboard. What will you see in a student's dashboard? These are the different subjects enrolled. So let us now look for one of my classes, which is English 2. So once you click English 2, you will be directed to the landing page, which is the welcome page. My welcome page consists of a welcome video. So let's try to click this one. Hello. Great to be with us. I am Mrs. Mary Lenfer R. Mercado. You may call me Teacher Mary. Welcome to our English class. In this class, you... you okay, so that is the welcome page. Now let us look at the lessons. We have to take note some of the important terms that are used in FSU you learn. When we say class that is referred to as subject. When we say assignment, that is referred to as assessment. And when you say section, this is the part of a lesson. So a lesson may contain several sections. Now in my class, English 2, you will see the first lesson. So once you click this one, what are we going to see? This lesson is entitled Common and proper nouns. Commonly, you will see different resources used by a teacher, such as this one, a video. You will also see audio clip. You will see PowerPoint presentations, plain texts, and some are PDF or PowerPoint presentations. Take note, parents, that the student cannot skip from one section to another, which means that a section must be completed first before you can proceed to the next section. So we have to begin with the engage part. What do you see in the engage part? So as what I have said, you will see an audio clip. Okay, this is one of my audio clips. And just in case your internet connection is poor, you may just read the text below, which serves as the subtitle. So let's try to play the audio clip. Do you still remember something about the noun lessons you had in grade 1? Get ready. So what's in the audio clip is just the same with the text below. Then you have there a video. Okay. Once this is completed, you may just click continue. You'll see on the upper right side, click continue to move to the next section. The next sec uh, section is a quiz. Remember, a quiz is a form of an assessment. 
In FSU, you learn it is called assignment. So quiz is one of the types of assignment in FSU you learn. Let's try to answer this quiz. This quiz has matching type questions. So I'm going to show you how are you going to answer a matching type question so that you will be able to guide your children on how to do this one. You only have to drag the pictures. For example, let's look for the picture of persons. You click on the picture, drag it, and once you see that the box turned to gray, it is now ready to be dropped. See? As easy as that. Okay, let's finish this one. We have places. Things. And animals. Then you click continue. Before you move to the next part or section, make sure you click finished. Or always remember to, gui to guide your children and to remind your children to always click finished. So once you click finished, that will be submitted already. So in your submission, you will see the questions and your answer. So you may now continue to the next section. Click continue. This is another kind of assignment. This is a discussion. How are you going to do a discussion type of assignment? So you have to click see discussion. So here, you have already seen the answers of some of the students. If you are going to answer, don't forget to click post. Then this is the area where you can type your answers. Give your own examples of nouns which are found at home. Type one person, one place, one animal, and one thing on the discussion board. For example, you type child. Then you click send. You now have your submission for the discussion assignment. Click continue for the next section. You are now in the Explore section. We have again here another audio clip. You'll see a picture, and don't forget to scroll down for the other items. Then click Continue. Another assignment to be answered. This is a multiple choice type of question. So you have, to collect, uh, you have to select the correct response by clicking the button, select the correct response, common or proper. Okay, let's finish answering this one. And if you want to go back to the previous section or part, you may just click Previews. Philippines is proper. Country is common. Cat is common. Tara is proper. Harry Potter is proper. Movie is common. Once you are done with the questions, you will see again this part where you have to click Finished. So you are done with that type of assignment. Click continue for the next section. So this is now the explain section, wherein the teacher explains or discusses the topic. So you have here a video. I'll show you. Hello, children. How was your experience doing the engage and explore part? Were you able to answer the questions correctly? When you were in grade 1, you were asked to identify the different... Okay, so once you are done watching the video, you may click continue. Another form of assignment. 
see discussion, the same process, you click post, then you type your answer, for example, then you click send. For the next part, you are going to click continue again. The same process. Once you are done with that section, you always have to click continue so that you can move to the next section. This is the elaborate section. You'll see another video here. Once you are done watching the video, you click continue. Then you will see another assignment. So you will have here, take quiz, so that you can answer it. Question one, my teacher is Mrs. Mercado. Okay, so in this type of question, you identify which is common and which is proper. Let's type the answer. Click continue. Another question, our principal is Ms. Sanchez. The common noun is principal and the proper noun is Ms. Sanchez. Then click continue. So you are done already with the questions, click finished. Now you go to continue, click it. Okay. So the same process, the same thing that you are going to do from the engage up to the evaluate section. And once you are done with this lesson, you may now proceed to the next lesson. But remember parents, it is enabled by the teacher in a setting of the completion that a student cannot skip from one lesson to another. He or she cannot skip sections also. So each section must be completed so that a lesson will be completed also. That's all. Thank you. Good morning. I am Miss Andy Beltran from FSUU Morales Campus. I am teaching junior high school and senior high school mathematics. I am also a member of the Basic Education Ad Hoc Committee and is an FSUU Learn Trainer. Allow me to show to you a sample lesson for grade 12 math. The first thing that you have to do is to log in to FSUU Learn using your Oreos G Suite account. Once logged in, search for the class or the subject that you would like to study for the day. Let us go and explore the pre-calculus class for grade 12 STEM. So I'm going to search for the pre-calculus class. Let's click on the class. After you have clicked on the class, you will be directed to the student's landing page, which is the welcome page. In this page, you will see the overview on the topics that will be discussed in pre-calculus. If you are done reading the content of the welcome page and is now ready to start learning, you just have to click on lessons found on the left navigation pane or left navigation bar. By clicking so, you will be directed to the pre-calculus lessons that were uploaded in FSUU Learn by your subject teacher. Lessons in FSUU Learn has its own tile with a picture, title, and description. You will also see the progress in which you have done in each lesson. Lessons are configured in a manner that they can only be completed in order which means that you can't open the lessons on circles without completing the introduction to conic sections. Now, let us see what is inside the lesson on conic sections by clicking on the first lesson tile.
On the left side of the screen, you will see the outline of the sections for this particular lesson. In this outline, you will notice that there are four content pages or sections where you may view learning materials such as pictures, videos, and files. There are also discussion boards, practice exercises, and evaluation that you would have to answer before completing the lesson. The first section is the Engage section. In this section, a greeting is posted with an instruction to proceed to the discussion board to share your thoughts on questions anchored in the saying, Mathematics is everywhere. Once you are done reading, you can now click on the green button at the top of the screen with the words, Continue. You will then be led to activity number one, discussion board. A discussion board in FSU you Learn is an assignment used to allow students to express their thoughts based on given questions or prompts. By the way, please don't get overwhelmed when you see that there are five to 10 assignments in a lesson because assignment is just the general term for assessment, meaning these assignments are comprised of both graded and non-graded assessment, which can be compared to oral recitations and seat work in a traditional classroom setting. But you have to take note that these assignments have due dates. This would mean that after a set period of time, you will no longer be able to access certain assignments. But rest assured, your teachers will be giving you ample time to submit your assignments and finish your lessons. FSU you Learn will also remind you of the assignments that are to be accomplished. Going back, in a discussion board, you just have to read the instructions given to you. In this case, I would have to look at the pictures and think of mathematical concepts that they remind me of. Once I have formulated my answer, I would just have to scroll down click on see discussion and click on the post button students could even send in replies on the answers sent by their classmates this will allow students to interact with their classmates and even with their teacher once you're done click on continue we are now at the explore section in this section Activities will be given for you to use your process skills. For example, you are instructed to watch a 7-minute video on the introduction to the conic sections and is expected to take note of the answers to these following questions. When you are done watching the video, you can now proceed to the next section by clicking Continue. We are now in activity number two, where you will be answering the same questions that you were told to take note of while watching the video. This assignment is in a form of a quiz. For emphasis, assignment is just a general term for assessments and activities conducted in FSU you Learn. They can either be graded or non-graded. You can view the details at the right side of the screen for more information on the given assignment, such as the maximum score, due date, and number of attempts. If you are ready to answer the quiz, click on Take Quiz. Assuming that you have now answered the quiz, you could either proceed to the next section or opt to continue learning in another day. That is actually the beauty of asynchronous learning because you can have a flexible learning schedule that can suit your availability and the availability of the devices that you are using. The only thing that you have to make sure of is that you get to accomplish the assignments given to you within the ample date range given to you by your teacher. Hoping that that is clear, let us now proceed to the Explain section. Let us click Continue. In this section, Resources or supplementary materials may be given to you by your teachers to better understand the lesson. These resources could be web pages, videos, audio recordings, 
Word document, slide presentation, PDF file, and more. Resources uploaded in FSU Learn could either be viewed directly on the same page you are on or download them for offline viewing or reading. In this case, the files have been embedded as PDF files in this section, meaning you can directly view the file without the need to download it. Once you have read files or viewed the videos provided by your teacher, you can now proceed to the next activity, which is a practice exercise based on the learning material given to you in the previous section. Supposing you have answered the practice exercise, you can now go to the elaborate section. Let's click on continue. In this section, you are again provided a file on the application of conic sections in real life which will give you information that you can use in answering the prompts in the discussion board. This discussion board is for students to recognize the importance of mathematical concepts such as the concept of conical sections in various disciplines. Let us now proceed to the next section. For generalization, the students will be tasked to summarize what they have learned in this lesson. Supposing you are done sharing what you have learned, click on Continue. The next section is Evaluate. This section is for assessing whether or not you were able to learn the supposed learning outcomes for this lesson. Oftentimes, this section will be containing a quiz, a performance task, or an output that you should submit. As for this example, a 25-minute quiz is given in, and then you just have to answer it based on the lesson that was given to you by your teacher. But if you are not yet ready to answer the quiz, you can always go to the previous section to review on some points that are not yet clear to you. Or you can contact your teacher via the messaging feature of FSU you Learn. Once you have completed all sections and have answered the assignments, congratulations, you have now finished one lesson. You can now visit other lessons from your other enrolled classes or proceed to the next lesson for pre-calculus once it is available. That ends my lesson presentation and please take note that lessons may be presented in different ways depending on your teacher's teaching approach. Nonetheless, Students and parents can be assured that the content and activities in the lessons uploaded in FSU you Learn are carefully crafted to help the students meet the intended learning outcomes. Thank you. Good day, parents. I am Ms. Lorena Bas, a junior high school teacher teaching TLE 9 and 10 accounting classes and computer subjects for grade school and high school. I am one of the ad hoc committee member in basic education and one of the FSU you Learn trainers. Let me emphasize some terms in FSU you Learn. Class refers to subject, assignment refers to assessment, and if you can see class on your child's account, that refers to their subject. If you can see assignments in each class, that refers to assessments, such as written work, performance tasks, and summative tests. The resources which can be seen in a lesson are texts, pictures, audio clips, and videos. There are five parts of a lesson, which refers to sections. 
The section that you can see in each class refers to the five E's. All sections have start date and due dates. Please be reminded that the students need to finish the first lesson so that they can proceed to the succeeding lessons. So let us start logging in the account of your student. In the Google browser, you will type urius.neolms.com. Click Login. Login with Google. I'll be using a dummy account, so I'll have learn student at urius.edu.ph. Then you will type the password. So you have there the home page of your account. Today I'll be presenting TLE 10 accounting class. Let me present to you my lesson. This lesson that I will present, in which the student is being enrolled here, this is in student's view. So let us start with the introduction to accounting. Okay. In this lesson, the landing page in this lesson the landing page is the welcome page. In this lesson I have prepared a video for the welcome page. Hello. This is the sample video. I am Miss Lorena Vaz. You can call me Mama Moore. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our TLE 10 accounting, accounting class. In, in this class, you will know the fundamentals of accounting, financial recording and reporting, and most especially the processes on hand. After the welcome page, the student will be directed to the lesson proper. The lesson proper, which starts with Engage, students will just click on Continue to proceed to the next lesson. Okay, click on continue to proceed on the next part of the lesson. On the explore part, you have here the explanation about the introduction, the nature, and the aspects of accounting. The students will ag again click on continue, and the students will be directed to the explore assessments, which is the test for understanding. For the students to answer this activity, they will click on Prepare Answer. The discussion board will come out and the students will be given space for them to type their answers. If the students is already done typing their answers, and if the answer is final, they may click on save and submit for grading. 
if the student is not yet ready of its answer, the student may click on save but not yet submit. So the students can still go back and answer with the activity. And then the student will click on again continue and it will proceed to the explanation part. In the explanation part, you have here video to watch and some slides to read for further explanation. Then click on again continue to proceed on the elaborate essay activity. The student will now click on prepare answer and they will be given time to type their answer in the discussion board and if they are done, they may choose save and submit for grading if their answers are final. But if that is not final, the student can click on save but not yet, but don't submit yet. Then click on continue for the last part of the lesson in which you have here evaluate quiz activity. Now let us try taking the quiz. In each question, you may answer the following so that you can proceed to the next question. For example, the first question is, he unearthed clay buttons. The answer would be, I will click one answer, then click on continue so that you will be directed to the next question. Okay, the next question is, then click on again, continue to proceed to the next question. I only prepare three questions four trials. Okay. Then click continue again. After you have answered all the quizzes, please click on finished and the scores will be seen on the right pane. Okay, so you have there the score. You have three over three which means you have 100% in your quiz. So this is the whole process in entering one lesson. Since you are done with the first lesson, you can now proceed to the succeeding lessons. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, teachers. So definitely, this is a totally new mode of learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And uh, it may take a little time to familiarize and navigate, but it's doable. Okay, by the way, um, we would like to clarify something that I have mentioned earlier. Um, some are pointing out that I mentioned October 24 as the starting or the opening of the classes, but it's actually August 24. Po. I apologize yes. for that. I stand corrected. Um, it's Again, it's August 24, mm -hmm. not October 24. Thank you so much for those who commented and pointed it out. Okay, so it's August 24. Mm -hmm. August. Okay, so as we all have seen, it takes a lot of technical preparations to really launch this new mm -hmm. mode of learning with uh, FSU You Learn. That's but right. uh, equally important with the technical preparations then is uh, also the mental preparations for us, mm -hmm. especially for our parents who will be uh, taking some of the responsibilities, of That's course, right, Eden. in, in uh, facilitating the learning. Mm -hmm. Especially now that we have been, how many months na, no? For, uh, since the first uh, announcement of the general community quarantine. Mm -hmm. So, medyo importante na yung emphasis sa ito ang mental health. Yes, yes exactly. 
And so the uh, guidance counselors of the basic education, Mrs. Jocelyn Oclorit and Ms. Enya Leop, will give us some tips on how we parents can prepare ourselves for this uh, new mode of learning with the FSUU Learn. Orient parents. parents. So my name is Anya. And my name is Jo. We are, are your FSU Basic, Basic Education Guidance, Guidance Counselors. Counselors. With the new normal of online learning, many of us face new challenges today and we're all adjusting to the new normal. In light of this, the FSU community would like to give tips for parents to be ready for online education. Since the start of this COVID-19 pandemic, we have already learned the ways to best protect ourselves and others you know, from the coronavirus, which is uh, for us to distance ourselves physically, to wash our hands thoroughly, um, wear masks when we go out, and just stay home. Given the government uh, mandate for community quarantine, it would mean that we need to stay at home until further notice, even in our workplaces. The impact of the home quarantine entails a number of challenges with the combined complexities of child rearing, social distancing, and social isolation. It can be overwhelming for us. Nevertheless, on the sunny side, we fervently hope that the tips and suggestions that we are going to share with you today can ease your worries and concern. Okay, so we'll go to the tips on how to get ready for online learning. Okay, so the first tip is to have a good study space or prepare a good place for learning. When we say a study space, this is a room in your home where the child can conduct their school activities. But it doesn't have to be a room, it can be any part or area in your home that you think is conducive for learning. So actually, there are some suggested characteristics on what makes a good study space. So we have to make sure that this study space is clean and it's also quiet so the child can be focused. And this has to have good ventilation so they can be comfortable when they're doing their studies. And we also have to make sure that the room has good lighting. So aside from that, we have to make sure that this study space is free from distractions. So any distractions such as TVs, radios, or any kind of noise that you think might distract the child. And then we have to make sure that the study space has good internet connection. Because, well, it's online learning, so it has to have good internet. Yeah. So anyway, we have to also make sure that this study space is not too isolated and is also very accessible. So even though we want the child to be focused, we, we shouldn't let them feel that the study space is a prison. So let's, uh, let's prepare a study space that's accessible and not isolated. And then we have to make sure that this study space also has materials that are useful for studying. Materials such as books, papers, pencils, pens, or anything that you think might be useful for their studies. And aside from that, we discourage your study space to have any water, food, or anything that might cause damage to the gadget that they're using for online learning. 
Yes, that is true, Ma'am Enya. Setting up a good study corner that is dedicated to school-focused activities is vital to online distance education. In that designated corner of our home, let us make sure it is a place of quiet, with good ventilation, free from distractions, and of course, we should need a good internet connection. Another important tip to remember is to ensure that as a parent, we are able to monitor our child's online learning. Keep doors open. If the study area is located in the bedroom, keep uh, your doors open. And practice good digital safety. In your computer devices, you can actually regulate their access to digital contents, ensuring that there are uh, they are age appropriate and harmless. Um, you can do it in the Google setting. Our school principal, teachers, counselors, and safeguarding teams of the university will do the same for the safety of our students. Yes, yes. So that's very well said. So we'll go to the next tip. So tip number two is to communicate your expectations, challenges, goals and the accomplishments during the learning process. So we all know that communication is actually very important in the learning process. That's why we have to talk to our children about what expectations we have, like what we expect them to do or what they expect us to do during study time. And we also have to talk to them about the challenges and the struggles that they may have with their lessons. And then we also have to talk to them about the goals and what accomplishments they've done during the study time. So to do this, we actually have some examples on how you can communicate with the children. In regards to their struggles, we have to provide support and encouragement. Let's not discourage the children whenever they have something that they find hard. So some, some children actually admit that there's a part of the lesson that they find hard, which is good because we can help them. But there are also some children who are afraid to admit that there's something hard in the lesson. So when this happens, try to talk to them and ask them questions like, which part of the lesson is hard for you? Is there anything in the lesson that you don't understand? Let me help you. What part did you not understand? So those kinds of questions can help you see if the child has struggles. Oh yeah. So at times our useful concern as parents is how are we going to sustain the motivation of our child uh, to learn, particularly in these trying times. And our child is resistant to our efforts. We become stressed out. Um, which usually would manifest in our voice and gestures, mm -hmm. yes, yes. which would only increase non-compliance or refusal of our child if asked to do something. I can empathize with you since I am also a mother myself. Mm -hmm. This kind of scenario is not always easy for us parents. Our situations may be different, but the starting point is always the same. We need to start a, a good quality of relationship with them. Let us lighten up on our demands on them. We may have standard requirements and many demands we consider reasonable for our children, but then with these trying times, try to let little things go. Yeah. Perhaps to household chores, mm -hmm. like making up the bed, not putting toys away, and other activities, texting with friends, or being entertained online. The dilemma is that during routine times, before the pandemic, um, before the quarantine, we are trying to teach specific habits and values with them. Mm -hmm. They are important, but now is the time to ease up. What is more valuable? And given more priority nowadays are managing feelings of isolation, keeping and building good family relations, and maintaining harmony in circumstances 
that can be difficult for everyone at home. Mm -hmm. The kind of environment where your child not only has their basic needs met, but also for them to feel safe in sharing their thoughts, feelings, and frustrations. When this is done um, effectively, your child will feel respected, motivated, valued, and become more resilient. So here are the ways uh, to create this kind of relationship and environment at home. First is, of course, to spend quality time with our child. Mm -hmm. A recent study shows that um, quality parent time is directly correlated with positive outcomes with our children. This is good news for those of us who spend most of our waking hours at work. Often we are battling with guilt feelings for not being home with our children. So this is the, the time for us during the home quarantine. Quality time is defined as anything that is focused on strengthening our relationship with our, with our children. Um, again, uh, any time that is focused on strengthening the quality of our relationship with our children. So this does not necessarily mean to be fancy or expensive. Mm -hmm. If you are busy, you can actually integrate quality time into your daily, day-to-day uh, -day activities. So here are a few ideas. Let us bond with them. We can do things our children love. As for me, um, I tried to learn playing together with my kids their favorite uh, video game, Roblox. Oh, so we watch funny videos uh, together. We listen to their favorite music together. According to research, when we make a real effort to get into our child's world, they will never forget it. So that is actually my concern. Another is, have a meaningful bedtime routine. For smaller children, it would be a story time. No? So you can get uh, their favorite book and read um, a story for them, their favorite story. Or it is actually a tuck-in um, time wherein you see to it that they are comfortable in their bed, uh, in, their, um, in the bedroom, and they're ready for sleeping time. Like, you um, sit with that they are comfortable, they have comfortable um, blanket, and then before, before sleeping, um, you pray together. So the usual ritual that you have at home before they sleep. For my children, they usually uh, like to let me play a meditation um, audio. They love it. They love it. So you can research that online if you want. So for teenagers, this could be an informal chat before bedtime uh, where you can talk about each other's days, the challenges, things you are excited about, or plans for the following day. Another is you can hang out over the laundry. If we are doing the laundry, there are a lot of time to wait. There are lots of time of waiting before the laundry will end. So we can bring our child uh, along and use that time to do their homework, have a game, uh, playing a game with them in the cell phone, or sim a simple conversation with them. Another is to prepare a meal together. If you have the luxury of uh, being together at mealtime, you, uh, you can have your child help you no? uh, during the mealtime. Then correct. Connect during your time in the kitchen. Another is to prepare a meal together. If you have um, the time, the luxury of time to have that at home, you can let your child help you uh, do the cooking in the kitchen. Eat meals together. No? See to it that uh, you will have um, once a day you can eat together. Even in a simple bowl of cereal in the morning or a simple fish tinola uh, during supper. What is important is that 
you are there present and talking to them. Another is you can also message your child if you are at work and you will say, oh, I don't have uh, enough time to have to sit down and to have a face-to-face -face talk with my child. During work, you can actually just message them on, on Messenger or send a funny video in, in your a cell phone or do a video call with them, no? Okay, so another is exercise together. For children, it should be light and funny. You can like uh, play a YouTube video, a Zumba, for example, a video wherein you will, you can exercise together, you dance together with a Zumba uh, in, on YouTube. If you also have like um, equipment, exercise equipment at home, you can also use them and then you exercise together. Share um, household responsibilities. It's not enough that you we are we are just ha, we just do the command the, uh, the the request for them to do this and do that. It would also be nice if you participate with them in doing their tasks. And during the performance of the task, you can talk to them and encourage them and uh, to appreciate their effort that they um, they did the task that you requested. Example: washing dishes together. If you also have the skill in, for example, plumbing, um, like a leaky faucet, or you want to change the oil of your car, if you have a car, do these repairs with your child by your side. So with that, they can learn important skills, and you'll create quality chat with them. Another one is uh, read together. Research has shown that there are many benefits of reading to our child. If you have a teenager, you can get a novel and take turns reading it out loud together with them. Or you volunteer together. Um, let us help them um, experience uh, having the joy of helping others. Always remember that great things start from small beginnings. Any efforts we make throughout our day to be part of our children's lives count as quality time and can really make a real difference. Yeah, yes, it's very true. So I'd like to add a little bit more about communicating with your child regarding their study time. So aside from their struggles and what Mom Jo said about spending time together, so let's also try to establish what kind of goals or expectations we have during study time. So to do this, we can actually ask simple questions like, what, do, what should you do during study time? Or you can list out together what are the do's and don'ts during study time. Or you can say, what should you do during study time? What shouldn't you do during study time? What can I, your mom or your dad, do to help you during study time? So those kinds of words can actually help in building goals and expectations during study time. And aside from that, you also have to communicate with them regarding their accomplishments and the progress that they've done during study time. So you can actually do this at the end of the lesson or at the end of study time, or you can do, the, do it during your free time, like when you're having dinner. So you'll have conversations over dinner asking them, oh, how was the lesson today? Or what part of the lesson was difficult for you? Which part did you like about the lesson? So those kinds of things can actually help in checking the progress of your child. And it also helps motivate them seeing that you're interested in their education. And aside from that, you can also give them words of praise, such as, good job, you did well today, and I'm proud of you. Those simple words can actually be helpful in the learning process. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that, Mom Enya. So as we set those expectations and goals with our child, let us always focus on what our child is doing right. Remember that words matter. As the saying goes, the tongue has no bones, but it is strong enough to break a heart. Let us select our words carefully. 
as we always heard from parenting seminars, mm -hmm. when we correct our child, let us try to focus on the behavior instead of the person. For instance, instead of saying, you're lazy, we can say, I really need your help in cleaning the house today. If we, if we are tempted no, to label or criticize our child, take a step back. Take a deep breath. Well, in the process of thinking of ways to address the behavior instead. Let us try to catch our child doing good. Build them up and encourage them more often. Mm -hmm. Another point to remember is that respect leads to more respect. As we show our child that we respect and value them for who they really, they really are as human beings, regardless of their outward behavior, our child will feel that confidence from us and start to develop to develop it in themselves. Third is for us to follow the five to one rule. Are you familiar with the five to one rule? One to <laughs> Okay. So this means that for every um, criticism or correction you have made or we have made we need to try to make five compliments acknowledging the actions that our child did right so mamawi kibalita no for example um here is what i'm applying for my uh, little kid i love that you find interest in learning how to play the piano today i appreciate you helping every time in washing the dishes. I like it that you take a bath and brush your teeth regularly now. It's good that you already know how to cook rice. Mm -hmm. I love that you are taking good care of your younger sister while I'm, I'm away. So let us be specific in our praise. It's good to praise like what Mom Enya said. Yes. But we need to be specific mm -hmm. with what is the behavior that we are praising? So rather than simply saying, uh, good job, in order for the behavior to be repeated, mm -hmm. remember to always praise the effort, no? not the result. Even if we don't see results, as of the moment, from our child's effort, praise them for trying hard. For example, if after studying hard, our child still gets a bad grade, for example, or we are not uh, satisfied with the grade, let us not be afraid to praise the effort that our child exerted. Okay, so we'll go to the next tip. So we're going to tip number three. So tip number three is to establish and follow a schedule or routine. So we know in the learning process, that building good learning habits is important. In order to do this, we should have a schedule or routine that our child can follow. So when you're creating a schedule or routine, make sure you make it with the child. So that way, you'll be able to agree between the two of you on what fits you and the child's needs. When choosing this schedule, make sure that the time is actually fit for learning or it's the best time that you think the child can learn and it's also convenient for you because although learning is about the child we also have to know that we ourselves have our own schedules that's why the schedule has to fit both of you and then for the study time I'd also like you to note that you don't have to do a schedule that goes through and through it can be cut into parts like for example, you can have one study time for today in the morning and then tomorrow you can cut it into two parts. Like in the morning you'll have one hour of study time, in the afternoon you can have another hour. So it depends on you. But you don't have to go through and through. You can do it in chunks or cut it into parts. Another thing is when you're creating the schedule, Make sure that you tell everyone in the household 
so that they'll be aware that this certain time of the day is for studying. When you have your schedule, for the younger ones, make sure that you have short breaks in between. So what do we mean by this? Uh, you can actually have every 10 minutes, you can have a short 5-minute break to, do, to drink water or go to the comfort room or have some snacks. Depends on you. Because these short breaks actually help the child rest as well as you. And at the same time, it also helps battle the child getting bored. So that's especially true for younger students. Yeah. Because they have little uh, time. Yeah, the, the attention of the time. child. Yeah. So I can relate because I have a nephew who said, always says that he gets bored during class. So I think it's really important that we should have little breaks in between lessons so that the child won't get bored easily. So another thing, thing to take note, uh, during the small breaks, make sure they're not doing something distracting like playing with their phones or watching a YouTube video. Because the tendency is that if they do this, they might not want to go back to the lesson. So yes, you can actually make the schedule now while classes aren't happening yet, so that at least the child will slowly adjust to that schedule. Yeah, that's right. So it's uh, really nice and good to have routines, no schedules in in this online distance um, education. So research suggests that routines have a calming effect on home life. Routines help our children feel safe. Mm -hmm. This would mean that uh, we need to structure all. Doesn't mean that we need to structure all moments and activities. Um, just to be sure that some things are regularly uh, scheduled, like meal time, bedtime, time for the internet, TV, most especially in study time. So, um, just in case um, you feel bothered because uh, your adolescent or your child is just um, sitting in the sofa for a few hours and you felt like, what happened to this child? Um, it, it's just normal actually. All of us need our downtime, um, like um, a private time, a time to in solitude with ourselves. What is um, alarming is that when your child is energetic and always um, doing something, and all of a sudden uh, the the child just uh, uh, just felt. Uh, what we call is an energetic and don't like to do things mm -hmm. and just uh, always in his or her uh, bedroom so that's the time that you need to monitor um, your child regularly and if ever there's a need for professional help do not hesitate to seek for help so we as uh, your guidance counselors in the school we are uh, here for help Okay, so we'll go to the next tip. So tip number four is to stay in touch with school. So just because education is done online, it doesn't mean that the school or the people in school are not available for communicating. You can actually message teachers, school staff, and other people in the school using our online platform FSUU Learn. So there is a message and chat fun yeah. function there that you can use. Yes, exactly. So if you have any concerns, just like what Mom jo mentioned earlier, if you have any concerns or things that you find confusing, especially with lessons or things about your child, you can actually talk to people in school using the online platform. And aside from concerns, you can actually communicate what your insights are, the positive experiences that you have in the online education, anything really under the sun, you can talk to them using FSU you learn. Okay. So aside from you, students can actually use FSU you learn to communicate with people inside the school. So 
if they want to talk to their teachers or the guidance counselors, uh, us. Yeah. Yeah. So they can use the function, the message function or chat function at, in FSU. You learn, and the teachers, the school staff, everyone in the school would be happy to respond to your messages as long as they are online and available. And what makes this a good opportunity for children is that they can actually practice their social skills through the messaging or chat function in FSU you learn. Of course, when you have a little child, we have to make sure that we check on what kind of messages they have. And we also have to encourage them and help them on how to check updates or news in the school. Yeah? Yeah. So again, uh, stay connected. No, Reach out and approach the people you want to communicate with, especially the teachers of our child, our children, counselors, and all the other school personnel who could address your concerns. You can always do it through email. We have our help desk mm -hmm. um, and other communication channels like the FSUU official website, um, FSUU basic education FB page, and parents' exclusive FB messengers, uh, messenger groups, no? Mm -hmm. uh, to be updated with latest developments in the school and seek support from fellow parents, no? Yes. Who is probably um, having the same similar um, um, experiences at, as you are, um, as you, that you have gone. So, aside from that, connecting with family and friends regularly through Skype, FaceTime or um, Zoom can really make wonders. If you have co-workers or friends, mm -hmm. you uh, you were routinely connected uh, at the office or at your place of work, connect with them. No? Um, we need to have self-care also as parents and manage our stresses. Okay, so connections done this way, um, although they cannot replace face-to-face -face, um, activities, can be more or less helpful. So yeah, that I totally agree. So no man is an island after all. Yeah. So with that, we're going to the last tip. Tip number five is get to know FSU you learn the online platform. So. The parents, you'll be the ones to really have a major role in your child's education now with the new normal. So in order to assist them, we also have to familiarize or get to know the online platform that we're using. So take time to look around the FSU you learn platform. Look at its tools, the functions, the different menus or just really simply exploring the online platform can really help you in assisting your child in their online education. Aside from just exploring that, you can also ask help from the people in school. Again, I'd like to say that there is a message or chat function that you can use. So if you have any questions about the online platform, you can message the teachers or the people in school there. And maybe if there are also other parents or students who are actually fast in knowing the platform, you can actually share your ideas with each other. So the important thing here is you have to really get to know FSU Learn so that you can assist your child when navigating through the online platform. Yeah, that is really important that you were able to really know how it is to use the FSU you Learn platform. So with our busy schedule and preoccupations with work and a lot of things, our patience to learn new things, especially with new technologies like the online learning management system, the FSU you learn utilized by our child is tested. My fellow parents, remember the power of modeling. Our children are great imitators. We are models on how we handle the situation and what we do under difficult circumstances. Oh, by the way, let us also not forget to find time listening to our children. We must learn how to listen because if you do, 
something incredible will happen. Our child wants to talk to us also because he or she knows that you are there to listen and to understand. Strategies in practicing this is by giving our undivided attention. When we say undivided attention, it means we are willing to drop anything that we do. Okay? Make an eye contact with your child and listen to their story, no matter how uninterested it would be. Okay? So, um, another is, we can also paraphrase what they told us to ensure that we got it right. Say, for instance, if our child would say, he or she hated this, uh, his math teacher, sorry for math teachers out there, because the teacher did not answer his or her questions. Instead of rushing to give advice, um, you may say something like, you sound pretty frustrated with your math class. Tell me more about it. Why is it that you become frustrated with your teacher? Okay, so in this manner, you can earn um, your child's trust in opening um, up a dialogue for real problem solving. Uh, let us show empathy to our child. For example, if we have a house rule that our child was not happy about, we can say, I bet you're angry right now because your internet um, usage had been uh, limited or there's a time limit for your internet usage. This softens the conversation actually for us to calmly explain our side. So uh, like for instance, we can say, your father and I decided to have this rule uh, in order to lessen your exposure to radiation and so that you can sleep. So let us not be discouraged um, or overwhelmed with all these suggestions. Now we have a lot of suggestions mm -hmm. given to them, Mom Enya. No parent is perfect. Yeah. Uh, we all commit mistakes, mm -hmm. and every parent has room for improvement. Mm -hmm. Yes, very true. Even I, I am not a perfect parent, so I'm still in the process of becoming. Mm -hmm. So pick one or two of those tips and strategies and start from there. Let us not forget that after all these things are said and done, what matters is the quality of our relationship, especially as parents to our children. So I think that's it. Yeah. Yes. So, so uh, thank you for giving the time to listen to our tips. We hope that the tips that we provided will help you in this new normal of online education. Okay. So let's remember, we are all in this, this together. together. And because we love our children, we can do this for, for their uh, best friend. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Good morning, once again. Thank you so much, Ma'am Jocelyn and Miss Enya, for that input, no? for the tips and how to keep ourselves mentally healthy amidst this very challenging time. It's very important to have a healthy and, of course, considerate, uh, considerate mindset, right, Ma'am Exactly, Bidan? exactly. So we really do hope that everyone's keeping themselves healthy mm -hmm. and uh, safe this time mm -hmm. okay so we thank you our, uh, we thanks our we thank our viewers right now who are still with us uh it's it's 12 o'clock noon but uh, they're still with us so thank you so much for joining us and for those of you who are not able to follow us through our live stream today you may review the video through our official facebook account and through our um youtube channel you may also subscribe to our youtube channel Yes, that's right, Ma'am Eden. Uh, earlier, we have a concern and somebody was asking on what is G Suite or what is that G Suite account? Yes, very so, common question. 
that's a good question. But uh, and now we can introduce to them. Um, are we okay? So they can just visit urius.edu.ph. That's our official website. Yes. And if they scroll down below at the bottom part, we have here the quick links for FSUU G Suite by Google, FSUU Learn, and of course our official FB page. And again, to the uh, to the one who is asking, ano yung G Suite account? So if you click that, technically. Your G Suite account is your official uh, account on which you can use to uh, log in yes, to your to FSUU in. Learn mm -hmm. account. So, uh, in simpler words, when you say G Suite account, it ends with at orius.edu.ph. You cannot log in using your personal emails, account, yes, right. the ones that end with gmail.com. So, you really have to use your official um, G Suite accounts. That's right, and that's right. also here we have the quick link to FSUU Learn. Pag -click, click mo yan, diretso ka na sa login. And of course, we have the official Facebook page of FSUU. Okay, and, for updates. Yes. Updates. And another one here, everything that we are talking about this morning can actually be accessed in our Parents and Guardians Orientation mm -hmm. Kit from Morales Campus. It's okay. also here in the website. You just have to click it, and here it is. Exactly. So um, everything that we talked about in this orientation mm -hmm. program this morning are actually contained in this uh, kit here. So mm -hmm. you just browse through this, and everything that we talked about, the discussions earlier, were, are actually here. Yes, that's right, Mom Eden. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also uploading the videos here, our mm -hmm. orientation video, and also uh, some live streaming that our university have uh, conducted as well. Okay, and let us not forget then, mm -hmm. if um, they would want to get more updates about uh, FSUU Learn and Father Saturnino Uri's University in general, please don't forget to tune in to... On the sunny side, every Tuesdays and Thursdays, 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Yes, that's 10.30 right. to 11.30. And another one, uh, if you have more concerns, you can uh, directly message us in our official Facebook page. You can just search FSUU Basic Education. Or you can email, if you want, you can email us on bed.opisv3.help at urius.edu.ph. Okay, so for, for G Suite concerns, which I have been seeing in the comments below earlier, uh, please visit or please um, notify email itsd.helpdesk at urius.edu.ph. That's right. It's been a fruitful morning, Mom Eden, and thank you so much for the basic ed uh, teachers, uh, ad hoc committee for everyone, of course, for the personnel in the main campus who help us, the ITSD department, tech support, of course. Thank you very much. Yes, Mom Suzette and Sir Morris. Mm, um, Sir Fred, thank you so much for helping us uh, put this up. Yes, of course, Sir Bebot as well, Pantaleon. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, we have we have real for realizing this. Uh, event. And of course, our tech support. Okay, we have Mom Kakai right there with uh, the members of the ad hoc committee, yes. Sir J. Thank you so much, and so with the chairpersons of um, each division from the basic education. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today and for um, giving your tech support. Again, dagan kayong salamat. This is Claudine Adrales. And this is Eden Agkopra. Now, on to the question, should we stand in as teachers? We parents, I believe we all have the answers. Good morning once again in Uriens, Lucia at Lux Vestra. And we are all in this together. <laughs>